No, never alone. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. This song expresses a rock-solid reality that we need right now to remind ourselves of over and over again. Because our husband, our father, our grandpa, our dear, dear friend is gone from us. For us, a great light has gone out. More than 40 years ago, I was appointed to pastor a church plant right here in the San Fernando Valley of Southern California. In that fellowship was Dallas and Jane Willard and their children, John and Becky. In that uh, fellowship, uh, I was well aware of Dallas and his reputation as a world-class philosopher even before I met him. But in our little fellowship, Dallas was simply the person who led the singing, what we today would call the worship leader. And Jane played the organ. Remember those days? <laughs> Obviously, Dallas was miles ahead of me in every intellectual category, but that never seemed to matter as our friendship and fellowship in the work of the ministry grew rapidly and continued all through the years right up to the end. In those early days, uh, Dallas was part of a small group of men who would gather once a week to share and pray for one another. One young man in that group, Bob, would often join us. Now, Bob, as Dallas put it, was rough as a cob. And he would sometimes blurt out rather startling things. And one night, Bob was sharing with us how he had gotten a hold of a bunch of habanero peppers and had stuffed them into his mouth. And he says, they were so hot that they would burn the hell out of you. And Dallas looked at Bob and said, with that serious wit of his, give me a thousand of them. <laughs> well, Dallas must have devoured every one of those thousand peppers because over the years the hell had indeed been burnt out of him. Or to put it in the affirmative, heaven had been burnt into Dallas Willard more fully than just about anyone I have ever met. And you understand that the purifying fires of heaven are hotter than the fires of hell. Dallas possessed in his person a spiritual formation into Christ's likeness that was simply astonishing. Profound character formation transpired in his body and mind and spirit until love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control was at the very center of the deep habit structures of his life. Even in those final days, when his body was struggling, his spirit continued to radiate life and power 
and peace. Of course, we all love to quote Dallas's wonderful insights into spiritual formation. And he is so quotable, isn't he? However, are we just as prepared to take up his overall life of far-reaching human transformation? Are we prepared to absorb into ourselves the character of Jesus like Dallas did? Are we prepared to go through what it takes to become the kind of persons who can freely love our enemies, who can bless those who curse us, who can become persons of no reputation. Briefly, let me mention three rich character-forming realities that over many years deepened and thickened in our friend, Dallas Willard. The first was his enormous graciousness. Dallas and Jane and Carolyn and I were once traveling together in Florence, Italy. Now, to explore the streets of Florence with Dallas is like traveling with a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> oh my, I mean, just because Dallas knew of my keen interest in the medieval preacher, Girolamo Savonarola, Dallas took me to the piazza where Savonarola was executed and pointed me to that small, inconspicuous plaque smack in the middle of the cobblestone streets which marked the spot of his execution. I can't imagine that one person in 10,000 would know where that plaque is located. Then we were walking through one of the many art galleries in Florence, and Dallas had some special insight or pearl of wisdom about every painting. I mean, every single <laughs> painting. And all I could say was, oh yeah, sure, I knew that. <laughs> and finally I said, you know, Dallas, I, I, I guess there's this huge gap in my education in Renaissance art. And he smiled and said simply, oh, that's all right. You will have all of eternity to fill in the gap. Enormous graciousness. Then second was his profound humility. I was once introducing him to a group assembled to hear us teach together, and I wanted to broaden folks' understanding just a bit of the person who was about to speak to them. So briefly, I mentioned Dallas's day job, especially his work in phenomenology. And I referenced his book, Logic and the Objectivity of Knowledge. And I told the people, you know, I actually own a copy of that book. <laughs> and I have even read in that book. And I even understood it all the way through the acknowledgments. <laughs> Folks chuckled. And then I said, uh, in concluding my introduction, that Dallas is an internationally known philosopher. Well, Dallas got up, thanked me for my kind words, and then added, you do understand that in our day, an internationally known philosopher is someone who has one friend in Moscow and another friend in Mexico City. <laughs> Marty Ensign, one of our team members who was here with us this morning, told me about traveling to hear 
Dallas speak in a large academic setting, and Dallas had lectured nonstop for a couple of hours and then was taking questions from the students. One student stood up and, as American students sometimes do, proceeded not to ask a question, but to state a position, a position in direct opposition to all that Dallas had been teaching on for two hours. Marty thought to herself, oh boy, here it comes. Dallas is going to slice and dice this student into tiny pieces. But instead, Dallas simply thanked the young man for his comments and went on to the next question. After the meeting, Marty went up to Dallas and asked, why did you let those comments go unchallenged? I know you could have demolished his ideas if you had wanted to. Dallas answered simply, Oh, I'm practicing a new spiritual discipline. I'm learning not to have the last word. Profound humility. The third quality I want to mention to you was Dallas's mischievous wit, a wit that was always so welcoming and affirming. In the fifth or sixth year of our uh, Renovari's existence, we brought onto our team a wonderful writer and speaker, Emily Griffin. Emily is Roman Catholic. And I was a little concerned how she might uh, fare in this sea of Protestants. And years later, she told me how that at the very first team retreat she attended, that Dallas pulled her aside and shared a, a humorous, a fictitious, a, an apocryphal story, really, about Martin Luther. As the story goes, Luther the great champion of sola fide, faith alone, died. And lo and behold, he ended up in hell. And a former student recognized him and asked Pastor Martin, why are you here in hell? And Luther rep replied, it was works after all. <laughs> Now, of course, neither Dallas nor Emily believed that it was works after all. No, no. Dallas shared this story as a way of welcoming her and affirming her as a member of our team. Many years later, Emily beamed with joy as she shared that incident with me. Mischievous wit. By God's providential grace, I was able to be with Dallas the Friday before he died. I had come to say goodbye to a dear friend of many years. I, of course, wanted to pray for his healing, but I had to prepare for his dying. There is no contradiction in this. It is a simple recognition that we are not in charge of the issues of life and death. Finally, with trembling voice, I said, you know, Dallas, we may not see each other again. And then our conversation was interrupted as we needed to take Dallas to the hospital. And once at the hospital, the customary flurry of Doctors and nurses and medical staff went on so that we were not alone again until the evening back at his house. And as I was preparing to leave, Dallas took my hand and spoke as if to continue the conversation of the morning. He smiled and he said, ever so tenderly, and ever so firmly, 
we will see each other again. Let's be still for just a moment. Thank you, Lord, for our dear friend, Dallas Willard. Keep him busy until we see each other again. Amen.